Hello everyone, and Vicki Hurley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube, here to do the read for the full moon, the first chart read for the year of 2023, and it's going to be that full moon in the sign of Cancer, and it's happening on January 6th, 2023 at 6.08 p.m. Eastern, but times will vary. Okay, so it's the full moon in Cancer and it's conjunct palace here. And, of course, it's opposed the sun with conjunct Mercury retrograde. You know, Cancer energy, because that's where the moon is, it can be very sentimental. It can be looking towards the past, perhaps, being sentimental. That's the vibe that I really get about this with the Mercury retrograde, too. Um, kind of digesting everything that happened, maybe still digesting some of that food from the holidays that we ate, too, but definitely digesting all the stuff that went on not only over the holidays, but going into last year, as we turn our attention towards the new year. Mercury is retrograde. So, you know, again, this beginning of January, not the best time for these New Year's resolutions. It's always going to be around your solar return. That's going to be your best time. Or sometimes these eclipses, if they're hitting your chart, or these, you know, the ingress charts, the, 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 uh, the cardinal ingress, the seasonal changes like the solstice that we just had. Those are your usually your big times, but while Mercury's retrograde, it's going to be maybe hard. You could fall back into old patterns. Maybe some people will make it like six days to another New Year's resolution. It's like, oh, they're going to just fall back into that old pattern, especially if it's around like eating or staying home and not moving and exercising, you know, being more active, which a lot of people after they're eating too much over the holidays usually, it's always like, well, let's get back in shape, you know. And then this cancer full moon comes along. It's like, oh, that, that couch is looking so comfy. That and the cozy, I want my cozy blanket and my sit by the house. And I want to bake something in the oven and warm up the house and make it smell good. And, you know, things like that. But all kidding aside, you know, with this Mercury opposed uh, palace here, we could have some brilliant insights. By slowing down a little bit, while the Mercury is retrograde, while it's the full moon in Cancer, going inward, palace, we could have, we could have these big breakthroughs about what went down, what was said, maybe what was meant by what was said, if that makes any sense. The guys definitely came through with that, though. What was meant by what was said? Because you go through the holiday, you're talking to slews of people, and a lot of people you haven't seen in a while, and it's just like blah, 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 blah. It's just kind of a whirlwind of activities, no matter what. I mean, even if you try to downplay it a little, there's still things going on, you know, there is. And then it's just kind of like reflect, you know, oh, they said that, and blah, 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 and this, and, you know, kind of put it all together in your head, let it resonate, let it kind of all sink in and possibly have some kind of insights as to what was said, you know, and what uh, afterwards. I throw these part of fortunes in here because I don't want to always change my chart format, and I do use them on natal charts. But the part of fortune being conjunct to Venus here, you know, that's a, that's a really cool thing. Uh, that could be considered lucky, I guess you could say, if you have something at four degrees, especially of Aquarius or any of the fixed signs, which is uh, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, or any of the air signs. Basically, anything at four degrees that's making a tight aspect. This could be a real thing of luck, good fortune, uh, turn of events. The, this X, they're talking about something getting crossed off your list. They're showing me my list of all the things that have to get fixed around my house. <laughs> so if you have, if you need a lot of repairs or things that are going to cost money, you know, and, and that you're you're wanting to get done, um, you, you can maybe cross something off your list there. Some kind of fortunate turn of events where you could cross something off your list there. The planets are moving into Aquarius. We're approaching this, you know, the Pluto will be moving in in a couple months, but we're still having this big last blast in Capricorn. The Sun's still in Capricorn, conjunct the Mercury retrograde. Really shining a light over, you know, the past and going over things. Going over things, too, like this would be a good time to maybe go over all your year-end, you know, tax papers and finances and things like that uh, as far as a career. This might also be a good time to maybe uh, go follow up on old emails that need to maybe you, that you let slide over the holidays or things like that. You know, like go back over and, and clean up things that have to do maybe with Capricornian things, which would be more career, building, you know, building your future, these types of things. 
we still do have this Uranus node conjunction and it is trying this Mercury Sun conjunction. So you could really get things straightened around. Uh, what, what I'm getting is like if you've started down a, a wrong path, not, maybe not, wrong is not the right word. Maybe you started on this alternative path and you want to back it up. Like say you went down the wrong road when you were driving, you know, and you, you go, oh, I got to back up. I missed the turn off. And they got to back up and, er, and go the other way. That could be what's happening here. And to more be aligned with what you're really, um, it feels like, you know, you're not in there too far. It's still, there's still time to back out. There's still time to change your course, change your direction to align more with the North Node Uranus conjunction, our highest soul's calling. And it doesn't have to necessarily be in that house. I would not limit it to that. I think it's more of as a collective or, you know, as, as the group consciousness is aligning with our soul's calling. I mean, you could look at it in your individual house, and, you know, of course that's going to have some weight or application, but for the most part it feels different. Yeah, and the full moon is also sextile in this, and talking about the past again, the stronger aspect rather than the sextile, of course, is the trine, and it's trining the south node. So there's that pull into the past again. There's that pull into, um, you know, uh, sentimental laments. There's talking about laments. Going back to this part of fortune, you know, it is involved in a grand trine here with Mars. Mars is still retrograding as well. And it's got the Ceres over here in Libra. So this is this feminine energy of Ceres, which is also uh, a feminine uh, you know, archetype. And then it's moving into the, the Libra and very feminine energy. And it's trying with the part of Fortune and Venus, feminine, and then the masculine and the energy of the Mars. So Venus, Mars, and Ceres. You know, again to this home, this they're talking about the keep the home fires built, burning bright. That's what the guides are saying. But it could have this vibe of somebody that you just, you know, you can just kick back with. You know, spending time with people that you can just kick back with and be yourself. And you don't have to get all gussied up, as the guides are putting it. <laughs> you don't have to get all gussied up. And you can just be yourself and be relaxed and be really comfortable with. If some of you are looking for love, that you could meet somebody like that, perhaps. Maybe it's somebody from the past, though, with all this retrograde, too. Um, Jupiter is firmly in Aries now. It's moved up. It's in one degree, about almost up to two degrees. It's opposing the series. So Jupiter's back in Aries, and we all want to, we all feel this beginning of this cycle, and we all want to start initiating new things, initiating new things. There are stalls and delays and things from the past that really just have to be cleaned up is what's coming through. Um, we do have this still this thing over here, Neptune's keeping company with Vesta and Juno. So there's this cluster of Piscean energy with the, the, her asteroids, these femi other feminine energies, um, wanting to make things beautiful, wanting to get things cleaned up and be a pure pure heart and soul, pure clearing out the clutter, not only, um, you know, in our, in our uh, environment, as far as physical environment, but also the clutter of our soul and our, you know, our, our spiritual resonance, our spiritual auric field, you know, getting that all cleared out. And what I'm picking up about it is like doing so with love. When I just stand back and look at the chart with no, astro without my astrology eyes, with my artist eye, I, it all it feels like everything's pointing to Ceres. So let's get into maybe look at that a little more. You know, the Ceres, okay, it's the goddess of the grain, it's food, it's nurturing. Has a it's a kinship with the sign of cancer, I would say. There's some there's a there's some similarities there. And it's in the sign of Venus. So we might want to make our place, you know, do some decorating, taking maybe taking down holiday decorations, but maybe change it up a little, make it more a pleasing, making your environment pleasing and comfortable and a place to be happy. The, the vibe of the, the happiness, happiness, contentment. These are the energies that are coming forth th psychically for me th for the series and Libra. She's involved with a lot of different things are going on here. You know, she's in this, she's in this trine, she's in this Jupiter opposition, loose opposition to Chiron. I think that a lot of us, when you're, we might be looking through stuff and it's just like, you know, I don't know if I really need this anymore. Do I really need this? 
or is this just hanging on to something that's hurtful and painful? Um, you know, changing it up, making your environment really fresh. I'm seeing fresh and bright and colorful and clean and, you know, just uh, just clearing things out in all, all the way around and clearing out the clutter in your head, clearing out the clutter in your environment, in your aura, um, doing some kind of thing, you know, maybe uh, some kind of a physical thing where you might, uh, you know, get your hair done. I mean, maybe during Mercury Retrograde it might not be right, but I'm feeling that, like maybe get your, go get your nails done or cut, get your hair trimmed or get a fa facial or do a facial at yourself at home or something. It feels like a little bit of self-love, a little bit of pampering, and building up that auric field of that auric strength of being sovereign unto yourself to where you're an expression of, you know, the love, like I always say, you're a love and beauty incarnate, so you can get as close to that as you can be, you know, because there's an opportunity to do so, especially with the dreamy Neptune stuff, and these girls, you know, Neptune's got her girls with her on either side over here, you know, it's like, um, back and back and Neptune up over here, bringing us into that, the dream into the reality, the, the beauty, the highest forms of beauty and expression and creation and peace and love and, you know, spiritual everything, you know, it's pretty powerful, pretty powerful, pretty cool. And that stuff also is trining the, the moon too. It's making a trine to that, you know, loose trine. But the Vesta is pretty right on there, 16 degrees to 16 degrees. And then, you know, we got the 22 of the Neptune. So it can be dreamy. If you're dreaming about somebody from the past, they're probably dreaming about you. You're probably um, astraling. You're probably having, you know, a connection on the astral plane. That's probably what's going on there. They keep pulling me into the Chiron, you know, it's making the aspect of a node and, but what is, is it doing anything else? It's, well, it's squaring. Yeah, the Chiron is squaring the, the full moon here, so, but... If they're saying it's all how you, how they're not how you phrase it, but it's all how you frame it. That's what they're saying to me. It's all how you frame it. So it, it reminds me of that movie. Um, it's an Italian, it's a famous movie. It was really good where the guy there in the concentration camp, the dad and the son. And every day the dad made it like it was a fun thing, you know, and they're in the concentration camp. I mean... It's all how you, and it doesn't have to be that drastic, but that's a classic example of what, what's coming through here with this series in there. It's all how you frame it. Look for the opportunities. Look for um, a way to make it better. To make it better, 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 better. Is a Hey Jude? Yeah. Make it better. Take a sad song and make it better even more of Hey Jude. That's exactly what they're talking about. Take a sad song and make it better. Do what you can do to make things brighter, happier, and it doesn't have to be these grand gestures. You're going to have moments of sorrow, lament, they keep using the word lament, nostalgia, that kind of stuff. Maybe people who aren't around anymore, or how things have changed. You know, sometimes people get don't want things to change, they want them to stay the same, but the North Node Uranus is saying, no, it's going to and I've said this a bunch of times, we live in an expanding universe. You can't stop rock and roll and you can't stop the expanding universe because it's happening, baby. So, but we miss things. There's things at times when we, that we miss. What's that song that's coming through now? Old days, good times I remember. Old days that I spill with simple pleasures. Yeah, fill with simple pleasures. Take delight in the, the simple pleasures. Take comfort in the simple pleasures. Relish in the simple pleasures. Just, it's a maybe just having a hot cup of tea on a cold winter day. You can, you can find those moments of peace, those moments of contentment, those moments of just being at peace. You know, there's a lot of peace that could be had. I know Mars is doing its thing. Mars is all agitated still. <laughs> Mars, 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 Mars. We get it, you know, and it's doing a, it's that odd thing there with the making that aspect. 
semi sextile or whatever it is, but it's an aspect of adjustment and conflict, and it's not pleasant. But, ooh. <laughs> just float away, just like the chart just did, like Neptune. <laughs> float away in a cloud. But it's not all about floating away in a cloud, that's the thing. It's about tapping into that cloud and downloading it into the 3D reality. Things of art and beauty, things of just like I said, you know, making that perfect cup of tea or that beautiful, uh, you know, dinner, you know, and, or that these are the things that could really be accentuated and use the energy to to make things better for yourself on whatever level make yourself feel better make yourself feel comforted that's where the energy's at you may have i'd see you know you may see how you've been working yourself ragged and many of us have run ourselves ragged i really backed off this holiday i really really backed off of a lot of things you know uh, well we were snowed in too so there was that but i mean <laughs> And it was was zero below zero degrees, so there was that. But um, no, I really I, I backed off. I didn't uh, you know I, I just chilled out and backed off, and it was okay. You know you don't have to get so uh, there's so much hoop. You know it's just so much hoopla and so much uh, you know it's just it's stressmas and all the all the things that are associated with it, and then. You know, like, well, for instance, I wanted to take a couple of days off of doing the reading. So that meant sitting down, you know, and you, especially like if you have your own business or you are selling, retail is nuts too. If you're selling stuff, like people who have their independent creator shops, you know, they're just busy, busy, busy. You're working your ass off and trying to get ship things and the post office is delayed and da 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 da, Mercury's retrograding. <laughs> uh, I forgot where I was going with that. I was talking about, oh, uh, yeah, but in order, if you're an independent person, in order to take a couple of days off, you do, you have to, there's nobody to cover you, you know, so I'd have to spend a few really long days doing a ton of readings just so I can have those two days off, but it was cool and it was worth it, and I, I don't think the readings suffered because of it, but it's just like, you know, it's, it's always, there's this extra work piled on all the time, and this is like a decompressed time. This is like a decompressed time because by the time we get to the, the new moon later in the month, I believe it's the 25th or 26th, by then everything's gone direct. All the retrograde planets, well, Mars is gone direct and a few other, Mercury's direct, and I think there's even one more and I can't think of it right now, but we'll talk about it in the next chart read. But then the planets are gone direct you know, and then, you know, it's going to be Aquarius coming in here, oops, coming in here with the nodes and everything. We're going to, I mean, not not with the nodes, but with the Saturn, excuse me. I mean, this Aquarius energy over here. But it's just going to, things will flow more. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to push and make things happen. Because chances are you're just going to feel kind of, you know, it's it's not a, it's not a real motivational time frame right, right now. It's a time to kind of recoup, go within. In the northern hemisphere, we have our some, you know, we make some soup, get some soup or some tea or some hot cocoa, sit by the fire or you know, whatever you you know, be cozy, be cozy and homey, cozy and homey. <laughs> it's like a, a maybe that could be a some kind of a duo, huh? Cozy and homey, homey and cozy. Or a rap, a two rappers. <laughs> okay, whatever. Let's take a look at the aspect, Terry, and see if there's any big stuff that I missed, which there usually is. But, um, yeah, this is the moon sextile in that. It's opposing the Mercury. We talked about that. Venus opposed. Venus trying the Mars. Yeah, we've got, because it's part of the Grand Trine, if you include, um, Ceres over here. So, you know, conversations could be had with this Venus tried Mars where you could maybe get somewhere on an intellectual level if, if there's been some kind of a fallout, some kind of conflict. Conversations could be had where maybe with the Libra energy coming in that we could get, we could find a balance, we could find a compromise, we could find a way to get along. Yeah, Uranus conjunct the nose. Yeah, everything in the Aspectarian I've, I've covered. So, get that tea kettle going. <laughs> Get your favorite blanket, throw it in the dryer, get it nice and warm and toasty, snuggle up with Netflix and chill or whatever, you know, 
uh, I have to do my crocheting in the winter. I always do. I crochet blankets every winter. It's just to relax me, and it just uh, keeps me warm, and it relaxes me. And it's that kind of a time frame. It's like the break out the crochet and the, the hot cocoa, and snuggle on the couch and watch a movie or something. You know, that's the kind. Of, don't try to make it, put any big plans into action until we get to later in the month. Then things are really going to start moving. I know this Aries has crossed into. I mean, Jupiter has crossed into the sign of Aries, and it. It's lighting, it's igniting this Mars up again, but the Mars is still retrograde. I think I explained it in one of the readings about how it's like you got your foot on the gas, but your it's the foot's on the brake too. So the wheel's spinning, 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 and the smoke's coming out, you know, and it's like and it's gonna it's gonna go, you know, it's gonna take off. But why add fuel to the fire? Add another log to the fire, you know. Or throw another shrimp on the Barbie the guides came through with. <laughs> For people down under, throw another shrimp on the Barbie and chillax, you know, chill out, relax. Make your plans, go over your plans, go over your details. If you wanted to launch anything and you've got to get all the material, I know how that goes. Any, you're launching, you always got to get material, you got to get the, the illustrations together, you got to do the edits, you got to get the test, you know, test the website, test this, do that, you know. Run the ad, get the design the ads. There's always behind the scene and background stuff that can be done. So if you just can't sit still and chill out, you know, that's the, that's the kind of thing that you might want to try to dig into um, at this time. If you are a writer, if you are doing writing and you wanted to go over and do your edits, I'm picking up for somebody that they want. The guides are saying that you would do better if coming taking a heartfelt approach. So if you're right, look at your writing. If you want to be brutal, brutally honest, this is for somebody out there. And if it's, you know, if it's real matter of fact, you may want to inject a little bit of humanity in it, and it's going to go over way better. That's for, that's for somebody out there. Somebody who might even be writing like travel books or something, <laughs> or about their uh, exotic locations or something. That was a, that's a real specific thing for somebody. You know, speaking of, you know, Jupiter published book, because Jupiter rules publishing, rules the ninth house, rules publishing, going into Aries. I bet you, you know, this is going to be a time where we're going to see even more independent creators launching, publishing their books, or publishing whatever, you know, putting more and more independent publisher. I'm trying to, well, so the last time that Jupiter was in Aries, when's that? that was, well, 12 years ago. But was... The internet is as prevalent. Well, yeah, 2011. It was already pretty prevalent. Uh, you know, that, I think that was right around the time that a lot of people were going over onto Facebook, joining Facebook, maybe 2010 and 2011-ish around there. Um, but we've definitely come a long way technology-wise. You know, I think you know it's so it's so easy now to self-publish. It's so easy to. You know, even merch, you know, do merch for yourself. I mean, it's all set up now. And that stuff was definitely not like that back in 2011, because I was doing that stuff. There was a lot more manual labor involved back then. <laughs> you had to have, you had to know some kind of HTML encoding, and, you know, and there was a lot more behind the scenes setting up. I mean, now they just have, you know, there's tons of these, you know, these websites are just ready to go, and their e store is ready to go. You just got to fill it with merch, you know, so. There's gonna we're gonna see a lot more of that and yay I'm glad I, I think it's wonderful I think it's wonderful on all fronts that everybody's self-publishing because all these the good stuff that we would have never heard you know you hear about back in the day all these publishers these um, writers and stuff like um, that's got rejection after rejection of course the modern semi-modern day 20th century the the big famous one is the Harry Potter authoress you know she got I don't know how many rejections and now it's, it was a huge sensation for decades so the whole generation of kids you know so you know somebody with less less tenacious than her there's probably a whole bunch of people out there that had really cool stories uh, but they weren't they weren't willing to submit to hundreds of you know or didn't even know where to begin to, to submit or anything like that you know so nowadays it's just like yeah you want to put something out put it out same thing with music, you know, it's, it's all these, all the great music that went by the wayside over the decades because there's, you know, payola and record labels. You don't need a record label. And I found so many, I mean, I love this era of, because I get tired of listening to the same old crap. I'm not one of these people who's stuck on my generations, you know, I've, I've had enough of it. You know, I want to hear what's being created new now 
it's exciting to me, you know. And so that, you know, this is just, you know, I'm a kid in a candy store with with all the new music that's being created by independent artists and it doesn't have to be commercial by you know by some corporate you know corporate rocks decides what's what it's uh, you know it's all out there and I, I love it I think it's so great I've discovered so many I mean and then one leads you to the next one and leads you to the next one and leads you to the next one and you know you just you keep expanding and spanning and the cool thing about that for me with the music stuff is because they're still when they come to town you know they're still playing the small clubs and I always love that you know, I'm not one to go to any of these big uh, production places if I don't have to you know with a sports arena which has horrible acoustic acoustics too <laughs> I will put that out there I mean but I know these guys have PAs that will compensate for that um, and top of the line sound people and everything, but to see somebody when they're first starting out in a little intimate club, I mean, that's that's the best. That's the best. So you find them online, they come to town, you go see them, you maybe even meet them or hang out with them, you know, and, and awesome, awesome sauce, you know, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving all of it. Um, so we're wanting to start our own thing, all this new, t you know, this new technology, we're wanting to start it. But just wait till maybe the end of the month on some of this. Now's the time to kind of go inward. Now's the time of recuperation. The guys just came through with really strong. Recuperation is a big word in all caps that they're putting out there. This is a time to recuperate, rejuvenate, re, uh, invigorate, relax, and um, heal. Honestly, it's a healing time. All right, everybody. Well, I'm not offering any special readings right now. The year heads are over. I've, that's done. Um, or it will be done. I might let it run till the, the first week in January, but then we're done with that till next year. But, you know, I do have other readings. I have um, the astrology. As far as astrology, uh, personal astrology readings, I just have the soul readings that, right now where I do the past life stuff. It's a psychic reading off your chart, but I tune in and get visions and stuff of past lives and talk about some of the karmic stuff that you're working on. And then I have the regular old uh, tarot readings with a little bit of astrology. Look at little brief look at the aspects, but more of a psychic tarot reading. Uh, next month, with, with February, yeah, maybe February, I'll start in. We're going to have the Aries Ingress reading. It's going to be an interesting one again because the Jupiter will be involved, but that won't be available for like another month or so. Um, so thank you all for tuning in and liking and sharing and commenting. I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button. I'd love to hear all your comments. Remember, you are Love and Beauty Incarnate. Again, I'm Vicki Verley at VickiVerley.com or Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube. Do not be fooled by imposters. Have the best full moon ever. Get cozy. Get cozy and get rosy or something they're saying. <laughs> oh, now that other song's trying to come through. Rambling Rosie or something. I gotta go. We're gonna let that one slide for this time. If somebody wants to put it in the comments. Have the best full moon. We'll talk again soon. Bye.